Hey everyone, I'm Dr. Kwan from Loyola University Medical Center, and I'm here to talk about hepatorenal syndrome. Some of you may have never heard of it before, and some of you may be watching this video because you or your loved ones have HRS, and you want to learn more about this disease. Let me start by answering the question, what is hepatorenal syndrome? It is essentially a complication that can arise in the setting of severe liver disease. It mainly affects how your kidneys work, stopping them from functioning normally. It occurs mostly in people who have already been diagnosed with end-stage liver disease, also known as cirrhosis. It can develop gradually in patients, but is sometimes associated with events that can trigger it, such as when a patient has bacterial infection, GI bleeding, or severe dehydration. So you may be wondering, how does all of this happen? How can liver disease affect your kidneys? Well, the mechanism of how this works has not been fully revealed yet, but we do have a good idea of what may be driving it. First, we know that scarring of the liver causes the blood vessels between your intestines and the liver to be under very high pressure, a phenomenon called portal hypertension. This further leads to the enlargement of those blood vessels which in return decreases the amount of blood flow available to the other parts of your body, including the kidneys. When your kidneys are not receiving enough blood, it can lead to injuries, preventing the kidneys from working properly. Now you know how hepatorenal syndrome happens. So then how do physicians diagnose it? Well, it's a diagnosis of ex exclusion, which means there is no single test to know if it's taking place we have to consider and rule out other causes of a kidney injury first before we can reach the conclusion. I'm not gonna go in depth about all the tests we do, but I laid out some of the things we commonly look at when we are making the diagnosis. The patient must have severe liver disease and acute kidney injury. They must not be in a state of shock or have received medications that are toxic to the kidneys. We make sure there's no obstruction in your urinary tract or that your circulation system is running with too little fluids, which we usually check by giving patients fluids or albumin. We also look at your urine to see if there are any proteins or blood, which can suggest other types of kidney disease. There are multiple treatment modalities your doctor may be considering, but the idea generally involves helping your body increase the blood flow back to your kidneys. Some medications such as terlipressin with albumin norepinephrine, midodrin, or octreotide can be used. A procedure called TIPS can be performed to reduce high pressure within the portal system. While allowing the medications to work, your doctors may also consider kidney replacement therapy with hemodialysis or continuous venovenous hemofiltration, which can be more gentle. However, the ultimate and the best treatment for HRS is liver transplantation. Thank you very much for listening.